Hello, and welcome to Tonalist Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And um, the painting that uh, I'm bringing uh, to your uh, attention today is called Summer Shadows. It's an 11 by 14, and I did this painting back in February of uh, this year, um, 2017. Uh, today is Tuesday, the 16th of May and uh, yeah I something happened on Sunday and I couldn't I couldn't get you a post and then I kind of had this um, this video that we're doing now sort of prepped but I didn't have time to get into the audio so um, probably gonna roll this out tonight and I'm at home for lunch right now from the studio um, and uh, just thought I'd I'd get this out to you now I actually have like ooh, six or seven really uh, pretty good paintings in the studio that I haven't photographed yet and it's all been hinging on me finishing off these uh, these larger ones uh, uh, which I guess I have this one uh, as by the brook I am so fed up with it I may it's not that bad looking though so I may just let it live I don't know I'm sort of tempted to you know paint a, a coat of uh, burn number over the top and and do something else on it but it's got a lot of it's got a lot of good qualities too it's uh, a really uh, what happened on that painting was that I had um, laid down a uh, a coat of uh, you know like a probably third color pass second color pass I think it was maybe a second color pass and was applying the liquid to it when everything just started smearing which is like a nightmare and that's happened to me on a few paintings lately um, don't know I think I think it's got something to do with the there being less absorbency to the fact that these paintings are put on top of other older paintings there's many many layers there before you get to wood now um, so I'm thinking that that could be the factor or perhaps it's something up with my medium or it could be the fact I've been using the ivory black instead of a chromatic black. I've discussed all this stuff already with you guys, but you know, uh, I'm still dealing with the outcome of this. And you know, some of my attempts to fix it up, I created these like dark blotches, which had to be evened out, which took down the overall tone of the painting even darker than I wanted to go. And it's just one uh, thing after the next. But um, you know, I've had uh, prior to that, I had a pretty good. Uh, round of successes on top of successes so you can't complain you know maybe this stuff's in the stars I don't know either way I always just keep persevering and working and um, that's what I recommend to any artist you you can't control the uh, stars you can't control fate um, all you can do is apply yourself and work diligently and um, hopefully that hard work will pay off um, as far as what I'm doing in the studio today, uh, yesterday and today I've been doing board prep for um, I fin pretty much I have like one more little five by seven study to do of the um, 18 studies I went after. I guess it's been two weeks. Um, now I'm doing board prep on the larger boards. So I also have like these seven by tens. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I'm kind of prepping them because there were these off cuts I had and. Uh, I'm thinking of actually just doing some new studies on those probably down the road a little bit I don't know when um, I have been actually one of the things I've been doing at home in the evening is uh, you know I have an extensive Lightroom catalog of uh, my photography going back to I don't know well some of the photos in there go back to 2000 but uh, I think I got in and uh, was really um, digging in from say 2009 to the present and uh, seeing as there's you know 80,000 photos there a lot of them are photos of paintings um, um, a lot of them are photos of landscapes uh, that I, I maybe had done some paintings from or other scenes that I had de declined to, to paint uh, back in the day and uh, being uh, older and wiser and more experienced now there's things I, I see that I can make work um, 
you know. So I've been I've been kind of meticulously going through, kind of with a fine tooth comb, and assembling scenes uh, that I could turn into paintings. And right now I've got like 98 that I've kind of come across. Some of them are sort of duplicates of each other, or they might actually be the original reference photo for a scene I maybe painted back in 2010 or so. So. Um, but, uh, yeah, I get in these modes sometimes where I'm just like a heck of it. So I've probably been putting about an hour, hour and a half every night into sort of painstakingly going through this uh, huge catalog of photographs bit by bit and uh, pulling out scenes that I think would make uh, good paintings. And um, I also, uh, no, I, I mean, that's step one. Step one is actually to go out and take the photo of the scene, you know. Step two is kind of what I'm doing now, where you go through all those scenes and with a um, editorial sort of eye and decide which could be developed into paintings. And then that development process, I do quite a lot of work in Photoshop and um, that's something I have uh, been doing some of that as well. I uh, probably have like another four or five I've done. Um, you know that are ready to go but uh, I like to have a big backlog of things like that and that's one of the reasons why I had 18 assembled because um, you know I basically kind of stepped out of my normal process and did new new paintings on top of old paintings for the last couple months so that's why I have 18 of these 5 by 7 uh, studies and um, ooh, I think I'm gonna develop about uh, seven of them into uh, larger works and uh, so that's the board prep I'm doing today and now my board prep I have in the past I was when I was these are all gonna be burn umber I'm still not uh, done with my fascination with that as a ground color but um, one thing I've added is a little wrinkle as I used to just add the acrylic uh, burnt umber to the acrylic transparent gesso and then cover my board with that and then basically just jump in and start painting but um, starting with this recent pass of 5x7s what I've done is uh, I the day after that acrylic um, gesso layer is dried I sand it down lightly I don't sand it so much that it's completely smooth but I sand it down so it's not too many peaks and too many little valleys and um, then I go over it with a, uh, a fairly thin uh, layer of uh, it's thin down burnt umber oil paint and my reasoning there was like it just kind of fills things in a little bit so when I have bits of this color peeking through uh, gives me a more uniform surface, painting surface. Where, where if you were out here, you could see in some of my, um, especially in my 5x7 studies, uh, if you look at it from the side, you could almost see areas where a bit of that uh, burnt sienna um, underpainting is actually peeking through. It's actually no no real oil paint there, you know, or very little of it. So, um, and I've uh, adjusted for that in the past by just doing extra coats of liquid and stuff to kind of fill things in. But um, the other thing I like is I think it's kind of um, a little more flexible as far as painting. It's already got a, a coat of oil paint on it. And um, now the downside of that is I've noticed uh, when um, uh, I've been using uh, the black ivory black for my underpaintings that sometimes I had some areas go matte and I might rub some oil down and I find I'm rubbing away some of my underpainting as I do that so uh, we're you know adjusting and experimenting with that now so um, I think I'm getting to the bottom of why that might be occurring, but I, I, there's no question in my mind. One of the reasons it occurs is because there's less absorbency um, because I'm painting on a, a bit of oil to paint there. So, but uh, I've got some strategies also for dealing with that, and I'm still playing and toying with the ivory black. I I really like it in some ways, in other ways I feel like it has this cool sort of feeling. Um, 
which you know gosh if you let you follow any other painter uh out there say oh don't don't use the ivory black you know and one of the reasons they say that is because of this this sort of cold quality it has but um I'm liking that and uh, you know I, the thing is like all these guys are saying that they're they're modern painters using modern pigments and they, in the old days the masters they used a ton of this black this bone black this ivory black color or lamp black you know um, so to say well that's no good don't use it ever you know it just seems silly to me and uh, and I really like I like aspects of it, so I'm still playing with that, still toying with that. Although, like in a painting like this one, I started out uh, today talking about this by the brook. You know, I've got a lot of this black on there, and it does have this sort of coolish quality mixed with the warm quality, which I like and I don't like. I'm kind of on the fence with it, but whatever, you know. Uh, so when I go back in the studio, which would be pretty shortly here, I'll be. Uh, um, finishing applying some oil to the surface of these boards I've prepped and uh, um, probably doing a little more work on my last 5x7 study that needs a little bit of a second pass done and uh, I might actually do some more gessoing on some other boards as well since it seems like I can't really start working on larger paintings until that that oil paint uh, coating I put on today is dry, which should be tomorrow without a problem. I don't think it'll be a problem. That's fairly thin, and uh, I thinned it by using some, um, you know, alkaloid medium that's an oil, and also some mineral spirits, which I usually don't use in my painting process, but I, I know that will evaporate quickly, and uh, there's enough oil in there and enough pigment in there. I feel like I'm, I'm fine with that. It's just helping the application go a little more quickly and um, smoothly. So anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end here. Um, I have been a bit negligent as far as adding new pieces to the Sachi site, but I will be doing that this week as well. So if any of you out there are interested in you know purchasing a painting there that is a way you can do it there's going to be some eventually probably about 20 or 30 paintings up there i'm getting around to that but that link will be underneath the youtube post here um, also if you dig this channel you know click subscribe and uh, follow it on a regular basis that's awesome i think it's awesome and if you uh want to see more of my work go to landscapepainter.co.nz or NZ and uh, you can follow my blog there and also there's some uh, you know pretty good backlog of paintings there that you can check out anyway we'll see you this weekend coming up meanwhile take good care and stay out of trouble <laughs>